Hey guys, and welcome back. You probably already know, my name is Jessica Likewise. I'm studying for my BCBA exam. Well, I have some amazing friends in the field of ABA who are helping me out along the way. One of the things I find most confusing is experimental design. So I brought on an OG, original gangster in the field of ABA. He has 25 years of experience in special education, a doctorate, he's a BCBAD. And I asked him, hey, Dr. Keith, can you come on and please help me understand this? So rather than just being selfish and having him present just to me, we created a presentation to share it with everybody. He created the presentation and I'm just his uh, giving him a platform to share it with all of you. I also have exciting news. Now, I am not a BCBA, but Dr. Keith is a BCBA. I have partnered with him to offer continuing education units on my website. I am simply facilitating the sale of it. Dr. Keith is accredited by the BACB. Um, if you're interested in checking out what we have available, head over to my website, hopeeducationservices.com. Again, to be clear, I am just helping um, Dr. Keith to sell them from my website. I am not a BCBA, but he is, he's licensed and they're amazing. So without any further ado, Dr. Keith is going to introduce to us today what single subject case designs are and what they're important, what everything you need to know about single subject designs to pass that portion of your BCBA exam. So I'm excited. Dr. Keith, let's take it away. Hey, thanks, Jessica. It's great to be with you again. And uh, most of the research in ABA is single case designs. It, sometimes it's called single subject designs, it means the same thing. And um, I just want to briefly go through some of the basics of single subject designs with you. So uh, share the screen here, there we go. So uh, that's me. So with research designs, you want to ask, um, is it better to evaluate a large number of individuals at limited points in time, which is a group design, or is it better to evaluate an individual or a small number of individuals at multiple points in time, which is the single case design? So you just want to ask, you know, which is better, and it depends upon your research question. A lot of the ABA research, as I mentioned, is using single case designs, and Skinner really advocated that you learn more if you get a lot of data points on one or a small group of individuals than if you just get one or two data points on a large group of individuals. But it depends upon what your research question is. And group designs can be very effective in a lot of educational and ABA situations as well. Okay, so the characteristics of single case designs, it's a small n or a small number of participants in the study. It can be a single person, small group, classroom, whatever. And you have repeated measures within the design. So you're taking data as you go along. And the replication of the effect occurs at least three times. This is extremely important. For it to be a good study, you have to have three replications of the effect. And I'll show you some examples here. And experimental control is demonstrated with a single participant or a small number of participants. And then it requires visual analysis. And uh, visual analysis looks at level, variability, trend, overlap, slope, immediacy of change, and consistency in similar phases. So we don't have time to go through all these things um, in this presentation. But these are things that you want to look at uh, when you're analyzing the single subject data, which is usually presented in a graph. Okay, so single subject uh, research allows the fine-grained analysis, which is the ability to identify exceptions and the ability to evaluate variability. Because human behavior isn't always consistent. There's variability in patterns. Sometimes somebody's having a good day, sometimes they're having a bad day. So uh, you want to look for that variability and the exceptions to what is occurring. And then single case designs are very flexible. So as you're going through the study, and if something happens and goes wrong, or doesn't work the way you wanted it to, you can change what you're doing and possibly uh, salvage the study, or you're going to learn from what happened and what went wrong. Okay, advantages of single case designs is internal validity is good. So that's a, a, a extremely important thing. 
It allows for fine-grained analysis that we talked about. It's flexible, it's cost-effective, and it's compatible with clinical treatment. So most ABA research happens in clinical settings. The applied in ABA is you're doing real work in real settings. Uh, disadvantages of single case designs, there's always advantages and disadvantages in research. You get poor external validity for groups. There's limited questions that can be asked in your research. It can be difficult to study complex interactions and it's not good for identifying weak effects. Okay, so there's two basic types of ABA single case designs that we're gonna talk about. You know, these are the two most common forms. There's other types of single case designs as well. And this is an ABAB design, which is also called a withdrawal design. And so what you have here is the dependent variable. That's what you're measuring. And then you have the timeline. So most ABA designs occur across days or sessions. And then you have baselines. So you start out with baseline, and that's before you do your intervention. And then you have the B phase, which is the intervention phase. So you went from baseline to intervention, and then you go back to baseline. You withdraw the intervention or remove the intervention, and then you go back to the intervention a second time. So it's A, B, A, B. Baseline intervention, baseline intervention. Okay. And then you have three demonstrations of effects. So you see the circle there, and if you look at the data, that's represented in the graph, you see that it's changing each time that there's a phase change from baseline to intervention, from intervention to baseline, and from baseline back to intervention. So it's the three demonstrations of effect. That's what you really want to see. If you're not seeing the three demonstrations of effect, then the intervention is not working or it's very weak. So you want to see the robust uh, change in behavior. And as an experimenter, you can say, well, I'll do three uh, demonstrations of effect. I'll do four, I'll do five. What do you want? So the more demonstrations of effect you get, the stronger the study is. Okay, so ABAB, good internal validity, okay? Uh, good external validity. Uh, you can uh, uh, use, uh, assume that the results will work with other individuals. And advantage is it ends an intervention. It provides two opportunities to replicate what you did. And the design can be extended to compare other interventions. So you can do A, B, A, B, A, C, A, C, A, D, A, D, A, D, just to throw in different interventions and see what's most effective. Um, disadvantages, you may not want to withdraw the intervention. So if you're working, for instance, with somebody who's extremely aggressive, then is it ethical to withdraw the intervention and let them become aggressive again? And it cannot be used with behaviors that will not reverse. So if you teach somebody how to prepare food or tie their shoes, they're not gonna forget it and you're not gonna be able to withdraw the intervention. And then again, the ethical considerations of withdrawing the intervention. Okay, the second most common type of uh, research design in single case studies is a multiple baseline design and we'll walk through this so again you have your dependent variable you have the timeline you have the baseline or the a phase and then you have the intervention so what you're doing is it's a series of a b designs that are staggered across time so you see here that there's the three interventions uh, of effect so you have the uh, first one there for Sally, uh, which is the informal assessments, then the quality IEPs, and then adaptations to general education curriculum. So you have the three demonstrations effect for one individual, and the time is staggered so that you get rid of some other possibilities, like something else is happening in Sally's life um, that changes her behavior in the situation. So. Three demonstrations of effect, and this can be multiple uh, baseline across people, across one individual, different behaviors, across different classrooms, whatever the case might be. Okay, so multiple baselines across participants, behavior settings, 
uh, advantage. It's not necessarily to reverse withhold interventions, and it requires concurrent measures of several targeted behaviors, conditions, or individuals. So those are all strengths or advantages. Implementations, it requires concurrent measures of several baselines. So you have to have your, your baselines occurring at the same time. It can require prolonged baseline conditions for some participants or conditions. So if you're dealing with somebody who's aggressive, for instance, you're gonna to have to keep them in a baseline condition over time. And it requires st stability of baselines for long time periods. So again, human behavior is variable. Okay, so that is the quick overview of single case designs. I hope it was um, uh, meaningful and made sense. Um, there's always some good books that you can uh, read. Alan Kasdan has a book on uh, single case designs. It's very good. Craig Kennedy has one that's a little bit older, but it's very readable. And uh, David Gast and uh, uh, Lerner have one also on single case designs. So Saturday night, wondering what to do. It's always good to pull out a book on single case designs and have some really stimulating reading. Yeah, that sounds um, like my ideal Saturday night. You know, I have spent many years just going out on Saturday night, and I think I'm at that point in my life where the most fun I can possibly think of is reading a single case subject design on a Saturday night. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only person that uh, has those exciting Saturday nights. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. Truth be, yeah, exactly. Truth be told, I, uh, I'm not a big partier myself. But <laughs> I did love this presentation. Thank you so much. I found it very helpful, so I know our viewers did as well. So thank you for sharing that with me and with our listeners. Um, again, if you're watching this, we now have a CEU available on the website. I partnered with Dr. Keith. Again, just to be clear, I am not a BCBA. Um, I am simply helping Dr. Keith to to share his um, wisdom with other people, which is really profound. And, and the CEU is on inclusion in education. So put a plug here for a book I have on case studies and inclusion in education. And uh, in the presentation, I'll walk you through what's inclusion and how you put the various puzzle pieces of inclusion together so it makes a comprehensive program for uh, the student or students who are in the general ed environment. Yeah, that's, um, it's, it's, and it's a really good presentation. I got the privilege of seeing it. So if you want to check out his book, Dr. Keith's book, we're going to have the book in the comments below. We'll have the link directly to the CU in the comments below. And if you have any questions for either one of us, head over to my website, hopeeducationservices.com. There's a form on there. Just drop me a question. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel because as I'm studying, I'm, I'm making videos to answer questions so you can study along with me. And I'm also going to be bringing on, um, I brought on Dr. Keith and other BCBAs to answer the questions that I have so you can benefit from that as well. So I'll see you guys in the next video.